Hey, what's up, guys? You're watching the Survival Skills Podcast, the show where you get to learn some life and survival skills for the 21st century. Today, we're discussing a different topic, and it's about kids, babies, little ones. Meow. Is that how kids cry? Putty cats. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, what, what struck this conversation for us is that we were watching um, uh, the Trevor Noah. I was watching a Trevor Noah video where he was t telling a story about, it's like the, the Daily Show, uh, a story of a dad, who, a parents basically, who are suing their son and daughter-in-law because they're not having grandkids. They're giving them one year. If they don't deliver in 2022, they're going to pay them half a million dollars. So imagine your parents suing you and saying, hey, if you don't have a baby this year, my, my, my friend, you're going to have to pay me half a million dollars. So let's watch it quick and then we can talk about it, right? Yep, let's show me. Okay, and Mike today is obviously dressed like a grandma. Um, I don't know what you guys think about what kind of outfit this is. This is kind of chic, actually. Chic? chic. What is chic? It's like classic chic. It's like a new French designer called La Pierre. BS. I think this is cap. La BS, no. The... La Pierre, not La BS. La BS. I la think BS. La BS. La BS, yeah. Yeah, la yeah, BS. sounds good. Okay, uh, it's on the merch store. If you guys want to buy one of these, which I'm sure it's nobody out there, <laughs> hey. you can find it on the website or hit up Michael directly on, on the social media. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, the video is right here. All right. So I'm going to have to mute our mic. Yeah, so it's, a, it's in Hindi, not English. But what I'm trying to do is to make sure that they can hear when the video is being played. Uh, activate system audio capture. Okay, there we go. This is what I needed. So I'll mute. I parents इतने सारे इस नहीं हमने बहुत शौक से इसको पायलट बनाया इसका मन था पायलट बनने का तो हमने बहुत शौक से बनाया सारा पूंजी खर्चा कर दिया अपने जीवन का कि बेटा जब बड़ा होगा तो अच्छे से शादी करेंगे और हम लोग ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स के सुख मिलेगा हमें ठीक है शादी के 6 साल हो गए और मैं क्या बोलूं मैं बयान नहीं कर सकता हम सच में हमको लगता है कि हम सब कुछ होते हैं कुछ नहीं मेरे पास कुछ नहीं है मेरे हमारे घर से सब बच्चे गुजरते हैं ना हमने जब घर बनाया बच्चे गुजरते हैं देख के अंदर से जो हुक होता है ना मैं और मिसे भी आती इसको भी बच्चे से बहुत प्यार है लेकिन वही होता है ना भगवान जो वो हिज लिटरली क्राइम प्यार चाहते हैं वही हमें नहीं मिल रहा हम अपने आप को बदनसीब मानते हैं और क्या Whoa! Hey! So oh. it's not joke, right? Whoa, it's serious. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's real, bro. Yeah, those emotions are real. Somebody is gonna have to go. To, is gonna have to pay half a milli, half a milli US dizzy, just because you're not having them kids, son. Uh, Mike, wh what do you think about this situation? Well, so for myself, it's different, but for India, I can understand where the parents are coming from. Yeah. Like culturally, it's the norm that everyone gets children. Mm. When you get married, the reason you get married is to continue the family, right? Mm -hmm. And the pride. And grandparents uh, probably look for their survival through their kids. Mm -hmm. And so I can understand it. So Is it different from African parents? Uh, no. It's similar, yeah. but I don't think an African parent would sue. Would they? It just depends on what level. Oh, that's to be a, honest, that's a very true. interesting di dynamic because an African parent who is rich enough to sue for a million dollars mm -hmm. he's more like them more likely or he or she are more likely to be well educated enough to not do this yeah but then these guys so you're saying in these guys are probably like worthy mm -hmm. because i mean they say oh we sent him to a pilot school he's a pilot mm. uh, we help him to get there and now he cannot give us grandchildren so you reckon these guys are not as rich so they're still no i'm saying an african parent with that net worth is more likely 
Uh, oh, actually, we understand. You, it's yeah. actually a weird question because it's not that all Indian parents are doing this. Yeah, it, it, it's a weird thing. We've trapped ourselves there, right? Because yeah, it's just one trapped. parent has come yes, up. Yeah. It could have just as easily been an African parent who came up yes. with it. Yeah. So what are we saying then? We're saying... Uh, I think you can see... I think I can literally see an African parent doing the same. Yeah. There is, there should be. Yeah. Because the culture of uh, looking at children as an investment is exactly the same yeah in south africa it's called black tax black tax right you you grow them up mm. you pay for everything when you're older they look after you yes yes, yeah. yes. and that's how you look and at it's like a social contract yeah. unsaid <clears throat> it's just supposed to, it's designed to just supposed to be like you know you cannot question it yeah and the reason it makes sense to be honest because people who may be listening to this who are in the west may not understand why you mm. have to do that yeah. because they're like their systems the government has put in place mm. however in certain parts of the world there are no care homes that the government puts the elderly in mm -hmm. if you don't have care from your family basically and uh, you're old you basically will be on the streets so the idea is when you're young and strong you invest in your children when your children grow and you're uh, frail and old they look after you they're your care home and actually that's very cool that's just the way indian custom is it's more about extended family everyone looking after each other mm. so i guess these kids are probably modern. The guy's a pilot. Pilots fly around. Mm -hmm. He may have seen the world. And he thought, why am I going to do this thing? I want to have fun with my wife. Yeah, yeah. To be yeah. honest, he's gotten married. And the wife also, I think she has a like a top job. So yeah. she's definitely busy. But then why did he get married, to be honest? Okay, now that's actually a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> he was social pressured into the marriage. Oh, that was oh, social oh no, no, no. He, the dad literally said, we got him married. Uh -huh. He said in the yeah, interview, we yeah. got him, we educated him, yeah. got him married. Yeah. Now he cannot give. So it's actually social pressure. It's very he true. was doing it to check oh. the box, but I didn't see what was coming. Yeah. The the son daddy is coming dad. for you. Daddy is coming for you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it hit him. Yeah. So in this situation, man. I mean, this is this is sad. It's almost this guy is, is like a, is a sociopath almost. No, I think it's just because he. That's the culture. That's the world they're in. So him not having a child, a grandson, is a huge big. I deal. mean, my, my, Michael, you you're old for an African man with no kids. Yeah, that's you're true. you're like a, a granddad who that's has no true. kids. That's true. <laughs> well, how does that situation when are you getting a lawsuit I get asked a lot of, well Did my mom keep ask, asking me this stuff still yeah she said well, I think she's given up on me she's realized I'm a wild card <laughs> my brothers have done that mission you know my two older brothers so she knows I'm super weird I say random you know mm. to just confuse her and I I, I I try my best to disagree with her so that she breaks out of the African mindset mm. which many African people do not do to their elders it's all about just accepting but it's easier for you to do it also because your mom is in the west now she is but i think the other thing is i became so independent quickly mm. when we moved here i started looking after myself i left the house i wasn't in the ah in the, home the immediate bubble. family yeah, yeah, yeah. Infrastructure. i left i was literally doing my own thing i was the one basically solving what problems age? so i think when we moved here at 11 i mm. moved i was 11 in the uk uh i think i became super independent and more of a problem solver supporting and dealing with mm. issues from about the age of 13, 14. Oh, wow. Yeah? So I understood, like, look, like so filling in university forms, applying for grants, getting things. I oh, so you were the one in the family who was helping everybody yeah, with, that, with yeah. that shit. I was the first to get, like, a UK passport, right? This was when I was a kid. Ah, because you knew the system. Yeah, I literally was, I was telling my mom, mom, get this, get this, get this. To this day, she hasn't got it. <laughs> She's asking me, but now it's really difficult to get it. She has to answer, like... She has to read books and answer so many questions. It's become mm. super hard. And especially for her, she's yeah. definitely not into yeah. that vibe. Oh, man. You know, when you're old and yeah. things are so confusing, internet's confusing. So I'm like, oh, why didn't you listen to me? Yeah. You know, why? Like, it was free at the time. She says, my son, could you sort this? I'm like, oh, <laughs> man. I told you this stuff when I was about 17, man. Why did you know? So that's it. That's crazy. Okay. So, I mean, it's definitely unfair. I mean, I think this guy is like, but I mean, let's let's look at this in a real way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the the days where you can literally raise your look. The whole thing. Of, Quick question, oh, Greg. Yeah. After you stopped that video playing, did you unmute our mics? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm watching this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, with that guy, man, I just think that look the tradition of having so many kids as uh, support in the future started long ago right mm -hmm. 
Uh, if, if, for example, when uh, the um, the life expectancy was short, yeah, there were not many opportunities. It was based agricultural survival. Yep. You needed a huge family to farm. That would actually that's what meant when it said children are wealthy. Yes. So like from where I come from, yeah. in the village, people still believe that because yeah. they're still... Your wealth is the number of children you have, right? Exactly. Yeah, Subsist- yeah, yeah. Subsistence farming. So if you have subsistence farming, yeah. so if you have multiple kids, it means that you'll be able to uh, grow bigger farms yeah. and then to become wealthy. But now life changed, but then you have people who are still in the traditional mindset. They still want that to be true, but it's just not because that guy doesn't probably understand the pressures of today's world that low yo bro it's too complicated yeah yeah you know and to some level it's not always also about right now i don't think it's about just saying oh you know we people don't have systems for retirement and all that literally like pe- people think that <coughs> you got burned no no i like it okay uh, people th- think that um they're literally they don't even think of retirement some parents they think that okay my son or my daughter is going to have to support they you have to support them yeah, yeah. you have to have kids for them mm-hmm. and this guy like oh when i'm when i'm when i'm looking at other kids running around outside <laughs> i'm like oh man i'm always like, i'm like yo why don't you just adopt that's true no no but the thing is they want to adopt because it's in it's programmed in our mind right those kids are an extension of you so people don't get most people think when they get kids those kids are them I think you and I are similar on this point here, so most people probably disagree with us. I would say oh, yeah, you know, on the planet, only 1% of people agree with our points of views when it comes to this. <laughs> so most guys are going to disagree sad. with the bullshit we're going to say right now. Yes, right? yes, yes. yes, so, yes. Yeah. so when the idea is when you get a child, yes, you've got a child, but that child is not you, right? But we, as animals, we are trying to live it's the job of an animal is to try to survive. survive. And one of the things is we've been programmed to think when we get a child, we are surviving. It's really the selfish gene inside of us. Yes. It's saying, okay, that child is you, you survived. So focus on the child. But really, that's a completely different animal. You'll be forgotten sooner or later, right? Yes. So I think that's where these guys are coming from. There's social pressure. Oh, I don't know. The, the Kumar family haven't got grandchildren. You know, the, <laughs> oh, they said, don't invite them to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Why they have something wrong? Oh, something wrong, but yeah. really. You know? By the way, so we can, um, Michael, may, Michael can do their, all oh, these people who are too political. Uh-huh. And they'll be like, oh, why are you trying imitating people's accents? Yeah. You know, all this, all this fucking uh, today's culture yeah. of like cor- uh, political and, co- that, yeah, yeah. and political cor- correctness. Michael is half Indian. Just so I'm so allowed that you know. to be racist in yeah. different <laughs> languages. You know, I've got a mix of everything, so I'm allowed to. Yeah, exactly. Mike is a mix of different things, so he can be racist. Yeah. Uh, My parents legal. planned this. They said, okay, this guy's going to do podcasts, and he's going to have the green card for racism. Exactly. He had the green card for racism, just so that you know. The green. The green. Uh-huh. Okay. Um. Yuri, could you help fix this camera? It's focused on the glass instead of me. Just try to tap the screen to focus on my beautiful double face. Double tap? Yeah, double, double tap. Just try. Perfecto. Huh. Supremacis. Nakamoto, Yuri Nakamoto. Shout out to Yuri. Shout out to you. So, okay. great. You tell me, uh, do you plan on having kids? I don't know. It's the honest answer. You know, um, mm-hmm. I think right now I have like, for example, like my goals and I like, I have other priorities more that I would like to get than children. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if having kids right now would be, I don't know if I would be content with that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would settle down and become a father and be, mm-hmm. go, being at home with the kids. I don't think, people say that, oh, you, they feel it when they ha- want to have kids. I haven't feel, felt that. So, you know, as for as long as I can run with it, I'm just going to be free balling. Yeah, yeah. I'm the what same. What about you? Same exactly. Like, I don't yet feel, I love kids, you know. You have never gone through a point of like, oh, now maybe I should have kids? No, never. Yeah. I love kids, though. I'll, mm-hmm. You know, I can hang out with kids. and uh, you know, The thing is, Mike is like a kid himself. So definitely. It's hard. To be honest, I was at a wedding in Dubai, actually, mm. four years ago. And there's this friend of mine, this Canadian guy. And he saw me at the table interact with kids. Mm. And later on, because he always wondered, how come Mike's good with people in general? Or kids or something like that. Mm. And then later on, he saw me hang, uh, interact with the adults around. And he was like, oh, my God, Mike, I've just realized something. Mm. When you interact with people, you interact with everyone as kids. <laughs> you know, so when the kids came, I was doing the high five thing. 
you've got me, you've missed me, right? And then for the same guys on the table, I was like, yo, what's up? And yeah. he was like, I was like, oh, oh so we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, same stuff, but it breaks the ice for adults as well. So adults and kids treat them the same, same stuff. Ah, so, that's yeah. clever. So I do love kids, basically. Once you break adults and you just play a game, mm-hmm. that frame of let's respect each other breaks. It's just mm. like laughs. So for me, I love kids, but I just don't get it. Like, I don't feel I have the need like, what am I going to do for the kid? Like, uh, the <laughs> Michael, you, you're a kid himself. Bro. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how Michael being your dad. That would be the funniest thing. That would thing. be crazy. It would be like two kids. Yeah. And then the mother would be like, they are, he, she has two kids instead of one and a dad. Yeah. She would have to look after me. Yeah. I can't see that happening. Just, I just don't know what would I do with a kid. <laughs> like, you take them to school. <laughs> and then what do you do? Like, but the thing is, okay, the way I look at it is I'm the same as you, right? There are other things. So I think I understand what it is, actually, why we are not thinking about kids. We have a different social pressure. Mm. Now, is it a social pressure? It is. Okay. Your social pressure is wealth and making it big. It's been programmed in you. Right. Because it's interesting, you're very good at analyzing everything, but the only thing that you haven't been able to out analyze yourself out of is wealth. Yeah. You know. That's true. Because if you analyze it more, you say, Well, what the hell? You just be a hippie and go to the Himalayas and say, Fuck this shit. But money has become the primary objective. I don't know if it's money so much as a primary objective for me. I don't really like money just for the sake of it. That's you true. Know? Like, I really don't care. You That's know, true. I, I spend That's money true. and I don't care. Yeah. But it's more about, I like building things. and cre- I, I just like to create. You're a builder, yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm a builder. I just like to build, build this. Oh, can I build this? What can I? It's like ideas and I want to get them done. You know? Do you have a sense of self-worth and self-fulfillment by knowing you've achieved your potential is that one of the things right so it's like you uh, i'm mostly <clears throat> chasing that mm-hmm. if i can i'm trying to prove something to myself if yeah. i can do something yeah yeah that's yeah. all it is same it's just that money is the good measure of getting things so done true. in the world you know it's just a, it's like a social contract yeah it's been written for us already yes. because look the thing is actually if you look at your life and my life and the things we buy we are not big spenders we don't have expensive watches right <sighs> Everything we buy is practical. Oh, so the thing is, that, that's the thing, right? It's like, on, an, on average, maybe we could say we live very cheap lives. Oh, yeah. Right? But then our, expendit- our expenses are yeah. too crazy because then yeah. we value maybe, we might not buy a Gucci, a Gucci shoe, yeah. but we're going to spend, I don't know, a crazy amount on traveling and going to this mm. place and... Just builds on some other things of building stuff, you know. That's it. We'll invest our money. It's more invested in like it may be a small thing, like you know, last time we were buying like suits just to go like a jacket just to do mm. something, and that was costing like almost one grand, right? Yes. And so normally someone would buy that because they want to look cool and sexy, right? But for us, it it's was just more. A tool. It was a tool. Yeah. yeah. It was just we are literally programs. We're like, what do we need to achieve X? You know. <laughs> so we don't see it the same way. We're not getting self fulfillment wearing that Gucci top. Right. The Gucci top's just something. To uh, make. If I, you're almost like if you have to wear Gucci to go to somewhere yeah. to get something done, you would. Yeah, exactly. If right. I know, okay, oh, Gucci is what these people read. Yeah. So when they see me with Gucci, it means I've ticked the box. Okay, I have to wear Gucci. Yes. Then I'd buy Gucci. But me wearing Gucci to go to a club, I feel like a punk. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Now let's stick to the subject. Now, would you have children just to please that dad? Because he invested, they invested a lot of money in the son. Uh, take him through school and all that. What do you think of this idea of parents thinking of children as an investment? You know, the thing and I know so many people are like, yeah, but look, they, uh, because the excuse that people give is like, but they gave birth to you, they brought you to this world. Yeah. That's literally what people say. I see it on Reddit all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it makes no when sense. When it comes to though. parents, it's a, it's a sensitive subject because I think people fail to look at this topic in a very objective way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nobody wants to look at their parents and think that they're wrong. You know, mm-hmm. It's almost like, oh, but you're, they're your parents. They're your parents. They can't, yeah. And in most, in some cases, look, parents are wrong and we have to face the reality. Yeah. Because, you know, when, you grow, when you're when you growing up, you look at your parents as these superheroes yeah. who do no wrong. Yeah. You start growing up and you start seeing the cracks and the yeah. bones. And then it's either you're going to accept that reality or most, I think mostly people we just like try to have with their own belief, right? Our parents yeah. are the superhero. Yeah. But then this, in so many different cultures, it creates other secondary problems that yeah. have become too complicated to control. 
Very true. I know you what know. you mean. I don't know if these guys know what they, you mean, but I, I... Can you give an example, but you know what I'm trying to say. I right? know what you're saying. You're yeah. saying basically when you have this belief that adults, it's basically this belief that respect your elders. Mm -hmm. They are the right ones. Uh, yes. In age Africa, is equal to knowledge and right. wisdom, right? Right. Yeah, there is some of that. But then what that does, it creates rules where new knowledge and innovation and better thinking is suffocated by old people who don't want things to change, who are keeping the old ways. Yeah. And so that staggers, uh, like suffocates any progress, which is the opposite of the US and countries that progress, right? It's the new brains and the new ideas win. It's not about your age because mm -hmm. you can have an old fool and a young genius. Look, there is um, an aspect of society as a whole. It definitely, I think families are good foundation for building nations, mm -hmm. right? It's stable, it's predictable. Mm -hmm. Now, that is looking at it at a macro level. If you look at it at a micro level, look, if you want to survive in a capitalistic society, you have to be selfish. That's mm -hmm. just the reality. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you take care of yourself first be before you think of every everyone else. So, I mean, we discussed about Africa, how to make a million dollars in another podcast before. Yep. But you will see that most people, they would get started and they'll reach a stage where they feel like the, another social contract or family and parents, immediately their parents are entitled to supporting them. You need to buy them this. All that. So imagine if you're, you're coming from a poor family, mm -hmm. you break out, you're the only one who have made something, mm -hmm. and then everybody expects you to help them yeah. by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you're really locked in this mindset and you can't break out of it, what you do, you end up spending all your money trying to, yeah you know help everybody and then you end up being broke because you can't even save, save for your own future yeah and then you're gonna put your children in the Under same the, burden yeah. because yeah. you burned all your money of trying to bring everybody yeah on. yeah yeah and then you also retire without any money yeah and then it just becomes this vicious cycle and that's uh, that happens most of the time like that's there are a number of african friends i have who have mm -hmm. that thing uh -huh. like or if they've moved to the uk they have family on the ground they send them everything they're living by the day yes. but everyone else there thinks it's, oh there's a rich you yes, know? Yeah. I know i know it actually happens in dubai right it, it's an, i think there. it's an immigrant story immigrant story yeah it, it's, it's immigrant story that's it yeah in dubai i think we saw this with john who is a oh, filipino oh man people. that was a funny yes. story you have to tell this story it's so yeah, you can tell. <laughs> so john is uh, works for one of the companies in, in gaming and he's from the Philippines. He's a really cool guy. He's never left the country. So Gray, you started by inviting him out to open his mind and broaden the horizon so he sees mm -hmm. the international po possibilities. He went to South Africa, then he came to Brazil, then he came to Dubai. Uh, so when we landed in Dubai, John was like, oh, I'm going to meet my friends from, we used to play basketball back at school. Like, these guys are going to be cool. So he, now John had traveled the world with us over the last two months. And so he, he was actually a big fish. So he thought from his mindset, coming from the Philippines, people in Dubai are the rich ones who send fridges and TVs <laughs> to, back, home. back home to show yeah. their strength, you know? So he was like, oh, I'm going to meet these guys in Dubai. So he left our super expensive apartment to go and visit his friend. He was proud. He put on his good shirt and he went. And when he came back in the evening, because these guys lived far away, yeah, he was like, he was a broken man, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> when he came back, he was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the shit that I have seen oh, is man. crazy. These guys are not living. So they were, he said that they were uh, saving chocolates. They've yeah. been buying bags of chocolates, keeping yeah. them in the home just so, so that they can send them back to the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. But he also said, I didn't understand. He had expensive necklace, yes, but he didn't have any food. <laughs> like when they went out, John was the guy who had to pay for all these guys yeah. to drink beer. Yeah, you know. But these guys are in Dubai, back home. Everybody said these guys are big ballers. They're selling yeah. fridges and uh, and stuff. So I mean, when I moved to South Africa, mm -hmm. I saw the exact same thing. And if I was a kid, but I could see how broken this shit was. I was like, yo, you have people who have lived mm -hmm. in SA for like six years. They're from different African countries. Mm. You enter their home. They li it's a small house in the hood. They don't want to move out of the hood and go in a better area where it's much more safer. Mm -hmm. They would stay in this dangerous area still. But if you enter their home, they have m multiple TVs. They have solars. Oh. They have washing machines. They get some of them from, from their free bosses. Yeah. 
the white people that employ them, they would give them you know, some free stuff. Yeah, yeah. They would keep them. Every month, they make, every week, they would make money and they would spend a, a portion of it buying something, whether it's a, cell, a second-hand cell phone from people who steal these cell phones or they would buy some gadgets. Yeah. Because to them, that's the definition of wealth. And then... Owning uh, more. Owning, owning wow. more. Owning stuff. Owning wow. stuff. And then at the end, <clears throat> they would... Um, they would now send... Maybe three years later, they would be sending these things. And it's so expensive to send it. And they would be like, oh, m- the grandmother gets this. The, sure. This one gets this. It's, everybody gets a distribution. But you look at this guy. He's in South Africa uh, as an immigrant. He has a shitty job. He's, he lives in a dangerous area. And he like, man, he's struggling. He's struggling, right? He's living in the shack where yeah. like... The, Bunch of yeah, people staying yeah. in, the, in the same. He could place. have just saved that money, improved his cash flow, his life. done you know, and he, yeah. it would have first. This guy improved his whole life first, his own life, right? Yeah. Get clean, get cleaned up, educate yourself a little more, learn new things, get a better job, get into a nicer neighborhood, yeah. blah blah blah, so that you start looking at a, a newer perspective. But the thing is, we are saying it in retrospect. We oh, can I was say there. In hindsight, yeah, I was there. I was staying with these people. Yeah, but could you have told him that at the time? Yes, but you know, now I would tell you what they told me. They said, when I was saying, ah, you know, I, I know how to do graphic design. This is the, I want to work in the computer stuff. They're like, oh, bro, are you fucking kidding us? Yeah. This shit is for white people. Yeah, yeah. You have to go and grind for us and you have to like follow. In the morning, they would stop by the corners and wait for trucks. So that's how I ended up working at, uh, at a garden cutting mm. grass. Mm. Because then I was like, oh. Everybody, including my, my, my dad, is like, no, you have to go and grind the real work. This other thing you're talking about doesn't work here, you know? Yeah. So you can be in that place, but it's not impossible to have a different perspective. I think, yeah. But, you know, I agree with you, but I think some human beings see things a little bit differently, right? I think you were able to break out of it, but with these guys, why are they still there? Now they've seen you, why haven't they changed? That's a very good question. Right. I think you know what it is. It's I believe right now that whoever is strong enough to break away from their traditional social pressures win. That's a good one. Because all it takes is literally just walk out of Al- Alcatraz. Yeah. You just have to open the door and get outside. Mm-hmm. Because you have all this... Op- Typically, people are trying to impress others. Like, oh, these guys, they're trying to impress their friends and family mm, back yeah. home. Yeah. To them, that's more important than doing the right thing. Because the right things take time to manifest mm-hmm. and people don't even understand them. So I'll give you an example. When I return, to, when I go to Malawi, even for the first time, typically people, when you return, they expect you to come with big TVs, like people yeah. travel by bus and they carry all oh, the cars. Yeah, they yeah, have, they're right? going to flex. And for me, I was in the hustler mindset, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll go in the backpack not with nothing. Yeah. Just with my clothes. A little bit of cash that I had because I was trying to explore what kind of opportunities I can find. Mm. Maybe I can start a little business. Mm. But I, w- I wasn't going there with like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know? So this podcast ended up being discussing about codependency, I think. Yeah, yeah, kids. yeah. But it's, I think it's interrelated, it's right? It's related, yeah, 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 yeah. It's talking about how we are under social contracts that we don't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah? That was to do with the children. You know, but this guy's clearly changing. He's broken out the system. He yes. doesn't want to have a child. And that's what, out the system. Yeah. that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Disruption. Yeah. He had to get sued by his dad. Yeah. Whatever how it's going to end up. But you damn know that this guy is not going to change. Yeah. And do this to his own children. That's he, true. Let's say if they decide to have kids. That's true. Then you know they're not going to be like, oh, you know, you're not going to have to do this. Like, even if I'm 100 years old and I have kids, the last thing that I want is to ask my kids for something. Mm. In fact, in our cultures, um, actually, our parents are proud to be getting help from, ch- from their children. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's, it's very f- fulfilling to them. But if you look at it, it's actually a negative thing. It is because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, because like, you, so what you're saying is parents, when their kids do well, they, mm. expect, they want to talk about how their kids has bought them this, this, this. Yes. yes. So it's really telling the kid, hey, your job's now. It's not letting the kid do what frees them and just leaves their I mean, look, it's harder for the kid to break the poverty cycle when you're young and then you have to take to solve responsibilities or problems of the past. Mm -hmm. 
what I mean is, if I spend, let's say I, ha I decide to have a kid at 50. I've spent 50 freaking years on this planet. Mm -hmm. Now, my kid is 20 years old. I should definitely have way more money than him. Def def and things in order. So true. That's a good one. That's a good I one. should have more real estate, more this and more that, more, way more than him. Yeah. Like, worth, I don't think it, worth shouldn't work backwards. Oh. Like, okay, mm -hmm. the next generation should not be, I mean, the yeah. last generation should not be poorer than the next one. Yeah. In a linear format, right? Yeah. You are supposed to start, as a kid, you're supposed to start and you get all the support you need mm. and you really end up really well. And then from there, if you got the guts, you have to now exceed where you found it. Yeah. I think it's a much healthier way to look at it. Yeah. You know, but right now it's kind of uh, in some cultures, it's still backwards. Like, no, the past is happy to be disenfranchised just so that the currency is kind of like them being happy that you made it. Yeah. Yeah. Their 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 uh, social worth is based on you. You making it. Yeah, you making it and you giving them to show you've made it. Yes. Having a huge party coming with a, I don't know if you guys had this when somebody comes with a pajero. That's the mm, thing. Oh car. yeah, of course. Oh, those guys they yeah, have yeah, a pajero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. So it's kind of like I think social currency matters more in certain cultures, in older traditions. To be honest, I think it matters in. Even in European ones, right? Because we've been saying this stuff, but it reminded me of this thing, right? Uh, in the world wars, what happened is, why would you not? Why would you not just choose to stay home and not go to the war? And the thing is, the pressure, even if you're selfish, the pressure was, if you go out to war, you could get killed, right? Mm. And that's the end of you. But if you stay, you they had to put like a little flower on you, mm -hmm. and that meant socially, you were not a man any woman would want to touch. Mm -hmm. So you see, so there are two options. You either go and you could probably die or you stay and you're not going to get any women. Okay. So what's the smartest thing to do there? I think the smartest thing would be to not go and then just run to another city. It's to not go and become really, really successful at something else. That's or true. Or just yeah. leave and go to another city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's really that simple. Yeah. But then if you also still under a, const a social construct of that, okay, oh, you were born here, you're supposed to die there then it also becomes too difficult for you to leave. Yeah. To be honest, it all depends on the information you've got, right? I don't so. know if it's the information. I think it's the um, courage to do hard shit. But where does that courage come from? Breaking up from yourself, from within. No, it comes from your knowledge. Unless it's a genetic thing, but the oh, more so, you know... So, 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 so let's say we, we're sharing this information. Yeah. Let's say there's someone else who do not agree with us. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that we don't know that we're right, mm -hmm. but one of us is right. Them or us, yeah? Of them or us, right? Yeah. Is, let's say one of us is closer to the truth than the other. Mm -hmm. Now, let's assume that in this instance, we're the one who are right. Yeah. Or even if they are and they tell the, us their part, yeah. are you going to change and do the right thing? Okay. Because so that's what courage is. So if I find out they are the right guys, would I change? I think you and me generally try to live a life based on truth. So mm. we are seeking out truth. M many people maybe don't have time to question things because they're busy doing their job. So for us, if we realize, shit, what we've been doing is the wrong thing. It's not based on the truth. We'll change. We'll, f we'll basically focus on changing our ways. Most people will not. It's the same as, I'm not saying religion is, uh, you know, I'm not talking about religion in this case specifically, but I'm just saying that's why it's difficult for people to break out religion if they don't even believe in it. Because breaking out of it means you're denying all the friendships and everything you've built. Mm. So it's a huge change. It's like the last 10 years of your life were nothing. So it's a courage thing. That's, yeah. why I'm, that's what I'm saying. Oh, because, I see. Yeah. Yeah, because you, know, you can know that it's the truth. <clears throat> but if you're scared to lose all the friendships and stuff yeah. for doing the right thing, then you just don't have courage to do it. That's true. But you know when you say it's the truth, do you know it for sure? Or is it somewhere inside of you and you're oppressing it without really facing the truth? That's what the truth is. It's like you Facing know, it. you know, it becomes real only when you actually face up to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right? You have the ownership. You of have it. the ownership yeah. of really uh, manifesting it. So yeah. I think that's pretty much all it is. Mm. But I think, yeah, for, to people who think they're as children as retirement, I think it's grotesque. Like this say, they say, oh, they, gave, they, they brought them to, their, to this world. Uh -huh. It's like, bro, like this kid did not beg you to to, to be bring, born yeah. <laughs> you know it's like you, you did it for your own selfish for your needs own selfish yeah, yeah 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 so and now you, you decide to have a kid 
and you're blaming them all, but I give birth to you. Without me, you wouldn't have life. It's like, what? Did you actually choose me out of a list of a million little Did I say sperm? that, oh, choose me. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then I'll make you the richest parent ever yeah. and I'll give you 20 grand kids. Yeah. You no. didn't say that. You didn't even choose like, because that kid could be any different version of a person, right? It's not mm-hmm. like you went and chose, I want this specific one. Yes. They were not like, because you know the spam, they're blout like, I don't know, millions of spam that are right. going. You didn't say, yes, let's choose spam number three. We want this kid who's going to grow up to be this guy. Yeah, we'll take him. Look, you literally had sex. <clears throat> yeah. And you made each other pregnant and you said, oh, let's face it, let's have a baby. Yeah. You didn't say, oh, let's give life to this person and help them go to yeah. school. You, weren't think- you were thinking about yourself. Yourself, yeah, yeah. And then suddenly you want to oh. change the odds and say, no, but we gave birth to you, bro. Like, no. I think we need to bring a little bit more common sense in this, yeah. um, in this kind of situations. So, you know, um, it's social currency. It's like unspoken contracts. Yeah. You know, unwritten and you have to deal with it. But I think if you have courage to break out of these ideals, that's how you can only be, uh, become successful. To me, it's the same as even being, um, what do you call it? Uh, patriotic. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not different for me than this kind of, how it's so? the same sort of ideas. Explain. If, do you feel strongly about a certain country that this is my country? And this is the flag, and you, you know, you're proud to raise the flags and stuff like that. I personally don't. I know you don't. So I feel somewhat like that for the UK, but what's the reasoning behind it? It's because I appreciate the way the systems are built and the thought process and the culture it brings. Mm-hmm. It's not just like, hey, uh, I don't want to talk about one of my friends, but he's so proud of his country. He's mm. from South Sudan. <laughs> His thing, everyone he meets is like, oh, I'm a Dinka man. So Dinka people are the tallest in the world on average. Mm. So his pride is that because we're the tallest, I'm like, dude, so wait. So you're so proud that you're, it's, there's nothing wrong with being proud about, but mm. the way he talks about it, it's as though he, there's no one else but the Dinka community. So his only thing that he's proud about, about that culture is they're the tallest. I'm like, but what has that done for anything? Whereas for the UK, I could say, okay, it's a culture that's based on great ideals for humanity you know okay. so that's the reason why i lo- i like the uk because would you, would you go to war for the uk against whom against whom um yeah that's a good question yeah and what's the outcome because look if it was during close the world the war close to the mic if it was during the world war yeah i think if we didn't fight on the side of the uk then the world would be a shit place to live anyway right so you have to see is it in your interest to be in that war Mm-hmm. on a personal level and i think at that time generally the uk was on the right side even though you know a lot of africans went to war and they were not allowed back into the uk as citizens but germans can pop in and out anytime yeah isn't that crazy like, there you a, go a, a there german you go. can just walk into the uk and they're part of the family yes but these countries in africa who killed themselves uh for the uk against germany the process is a little bit difficult you that's all i say it. that that's all i'm saying right yeah. so to me, it's the same things where like it's, it's these things that you're part of, maybe by birth. Like, for example, a country, bro. I didn't choose to be born in any country. It just happened. It's a random factor. Mm. Just like if you don't choose family, you don't choose. It's like I don't think that things. That, so what is a stronger relationship? Marriage or family? This well, when I say family, like bloodline or marriage, so, which one do you think is a stronger bond? That's a good question. And I've thought about it. And I thought, imagine, I'll answer that question in a roundabout way. Mm. Imagine you're a woman, mm. you have a child in the hospital, right? But you, when that happens, there's a switch by mistake. Mm. You don't know that's your child. It's a different child. Mm. You're going to love that kid as if it's your own. Right? Look, your adopt, adopted my parents pretty much yeah. do the same. So really, the blood thing's a weird one. It's just a way for us. It's just a programming in us to believe it. Because you can have a relative you hate who is not positive for you. But yes. you can have a friend who is more constructive for you. Right. So that bond, I think, all that matters is the one-to-one relationship you have with people. Right. But we put a lot of emphasis on family. I think it's probably a way we've evolved to decide like which... Uh, Clan. Clans to have and who where to put our loyalty. Mm. Because, oh, but yeah. it's weird, right? If you think about it, 
That's so a very good analogy guy, of like, okay, if you switch the children up at the hospital, yeah. which people ha- have gone through. It, has yeah, happened it happens. You don't know and you yes. still treat this kid as your own. But So what happens when you find out that's not your kid 50 years, like, I don't know, 30 years later? Does that Do you mean, stop loving them? Yeah. What because what the they're not blood? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. It's, it's, a lot, yeah, it's, it's not that logical. Yeah, right? It's all programmed. So the thing is, yeah, that's why I feel the most important things are practical collaborations you know where you it's a win-win relationship is just a sharing of benefits at the end of the day no i think that's why i would say that marriage or like um yeah you marrying someone Mm -hmm. to me it's a much stronger bond than your brother yes oh i get where you're coming from because you literally chose this person it's a conscious decision. decision this is whom i want to be with yeah Everyone else in your family, you were just born to be with. But you know the problem with that. Marriage. But the bond comes from, for example, when you if you grow up together, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. grow up as children. You've been seeing each other. You've gone through, and you know each other a lot. Mm-hmm. So you would be like, okay, someone in your family knows you more. But do you feel the same about uh, a cousin that you don't know at all, but they're your blood? Or let's say, no. if, let's say, if you hear today that, oh, Mike, your dad actually had four other kids in this area. What are you asking? Will I feel close to that? Would I? Would I? Feel, would you feel the blood connection then? Not really. Right. Not really. Yeah, it's, it's all a social. Would you? You because. Or would you even? Would you care to go check them out? Well, if there's something I get in return, if one of them's a billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> <I'll be like, laughs> which all relationships are, are yeah. all about con- con- yeah. something to gain. It's yeah, transaction. It's, share. it's definitely. Yeah. Many people don't like to hear that. Oh, oh, we are I fell out with friends just for that because I was saying, yeah, actually, it's transactional. It doesn't mean I'm a bad guy, <laughs> right? It just means I'm saying, hey, let's be realistic. You, our friendship is mutually beneficial because mm. it's in my interest for you to thrive because you thriving enables me as well. You yes. know? So, but no one likes to, no even, one likes even to say pe- that. Even people don't like to hear that even love is transactional. There's yeah. not real pure love. Yeah. It's all transactional. It's all of it. All of it. All of it. I think that's another topic to talk about, actually. Yeah, we'll record it tomorrow, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Love is all transactional. What are you guys think in the comments? Yeah. It's been a long conversation talking about uh, pa- uh, parenting, family, children, codependency, mm. love a little bit, and so many other different topics. So you guys let us know in the comments. It's the Survival Skills Podcast. Survival Skills for the 21st Century. Subscribe. Leave us a review on pod, on iTunes and Spotify and other places. We really do appreciate you guys for watching and peace out. You have anything peace else up. to share, Mike? A town down. No, uh, that's it. Cool. All right. Awesome.